In a unique instance within the British Railway network, the western region of the former Great Western Main Line out of London Paddington decided that, as part of the widespread replacement of steam locomotives during the 1950s and 60s, it would replace its venerable fleet of kings, castles and halls with diesel hydraulic rather than diesel electric traction, giving rise to a small but notable series of individual classes that powered a variety of passenger and freight workings throughout the years only for standardization towards the beginning of the 1970s to render these machines redundant after only a decade of use. The history of the Western Region's association with diesel hydraulic designs begins following the 1955 modernization plan, during which the British Transport Commission, or BTC, required that, as part of a blanket improvement to the efficiency and performance of the British railway network, steam traction would be replaced on a like-for-like -like basis by diesel and electric equivalents. With political pressure to ensure the survival of the railway engine manufacturing business in several key constituencies, leading to the encouragement of several locomotive manufacturers to produce small groups of pilot scheme locomotives that, based on their performance, would give rise to larger scale fleets, leading primarily to a poor outcome as dozens of individual diesel locomotive classes emerged to replace steam, but flawed in that they were either surplus to requirement the moment they were built or presented severe reliability issues that were both costly to address and dampened the prestige of Britain's locomotive building industry. For the Western region, the management of this sector approached the BTC during 1955 to request the employment of diesel hydraulic locomotives as their new standard rather than diesel electrics, their rationale being based on a review of the performance illustrated by the V200 diesel hydraulic locomotives of the West German state railway operator Deutsche Bundesbahn of which five of these 2100 horsepower units were delivered in 1953 and presented a lightweight stressed skin construction that reduced the overall weight to 80 tons, which was 40 tons lighter than the newly released British Rail Class D16-2 prototypes for the southern region, while also presenting 100 more horsepower, this reduction in locomotive weight being seen by the Western Region Management as a means of increasing haulage weights by up to two additional carriages, as well as presuming that making the locomotive lighter would also make it cheaper to build the BTC eventually approving their request by way of allowing them the opportunity to order a small number of diesel hydraulics as part of the pilot scheme. The Western region's unique order, though, did present some problems, namely the fact that there was a severe lack of suitable locomotive builders who specialised in diesel hydraulic traction, while importing scaled-down variants of the V200 from West Germany would be politically unacceptable in a time when the UK government was focusing on building an economy based on exports. The contract to build the pilot fleet eventually going to the North British Locomotive Company of Glasgow, who had obtained a license to produce the German Voith hydraulic transmission in 1951, and a license to manufacture MAN diesel engines in 1954, with the BTC approaching North British with an order for two types of diesel hydraulic locomotives, one being the Type 4 A1A A1A locomotive with two engines producing a total of 2,000 horsepower, which would eventually become the D600 warship series, and the other being the Type 2 BB locomotive with a single engine producing a thousand horsepower, and were affectionately dubbed the D6300 Baby Warship class. Sadly, constructing these locomotives in the same manner as the V200 illustrated NBL's lack of experience when it came to developing a stressed skin body, and thus, in conjunction with the BTC, the design criteria was altered to utilize a chassis using I section beams and cross members, which were riveted and welded together as the BTC could see no reason to complicate the design using non-standard methods of construction. This move increasing the weight of the Type 4 locomotive to 117 tonnes and the Type 2 to 68 tonnes, the Type 2 also being notable for the fact that its design was generally based on the same principles as the similarly built NBL D6100 series diesel electric locomotives, even down to the fact that they shared the same MAN diesel power plant, allowing for the BTC to directly compare the two transmission types so as to determine which gave better overall performance in the long term. This, however, did not give comfort to the Western Region Management, who saw that with the boosting of the weight for the Type 2 and Type 4 designs of the NBL, any weight-saving advantages that could have been garnered from the diesel hydraulic transmission were swept away, thus forcing them to turn to Krauss Maffei of West Germany in order to discuss a possible scaled-down version of the V200 for the British loading gauge, and although reducing the dimensions of the locomotive was not the easiest task, Within a short time, the Western Region's own Swindon Drawing Office had created an early draft for a BB design of 2200 horsepower and 80 tonnes using two Maybach engines, Makaidro hydraulic transmission, and a lightweight stress skin body. This proposal being put forward to the BTC as their own design of Type 4 that would be constructed at Swindon. The BTC feeling this was politically acceptable, 
and thereby allowing the development to commence, leading to the Western region initially employing the services of 14 pilot scheme locomotives as developed by North British, 5 D600s and 6 D6300s, together with three Swindon-designed D800 warships, the former two pilot scheme classes the Western region reluctantly being forced to take on, despite the fact that their design specifications were completely out of sync with what they desired in their hydraulic locomotives. In service, the initial batch of diesel hydraulics included the top-end Type 4 of the D600 class, of which all five were built at the NBL Works in Glasgow, at a cost of £87,500 per unit, these locomotives being powered by MAN L12B 1821 engines that produced 1,000 horsepower each and could attain a top speed of 90 miles an hour, each of these engines being named in alphabetical order after five famous Royal Navy warships, Active, Ark Royal, Bulldog, Conquest and Cossack and were outshopped in BR Standard Green, these engines illustrating early on several small engine and transmission faults that had to be rectified by NBL due to a contractual agreement with the Western region, meaning these locomotives were out of service for prolonged periods awaiting repair, while the Spanner Mark 1A train heating boilers, used to heat all the forms of coaching stock prior to the development of electric train heating, were of dubious quality and regularly failed leading again to their removal from service so as not to leave passengers in freezing conditions during the winter months. Reliability of the D600s improving throughout 1961, but with the advent of additional D800 warship locomotives to replace them, this pilot fleet of unloved units were put onto less taxing secondary duties until their full retirement in December 1967, with all members scrapped. The D6300 baby warships fared slightly better as even before the six initial pilot's units were delivered in January 1959, which were powered by a single 1,000-horsepower MAN L12 V18 21A engine that gave a top speed of 75 miles an hour, the BTC had ordered an additional 52 members of the class 14 months prior in November 1957, making it the biggest single order for diesel locomotives at the time. The major difference between these locomotives and the initial batch of six being that the MAN power plant was uprated to 1,100 horsepower and the Spanner Mark I train heating boiler was switched out to a more reliable Clayton or stone vapor unit. The D6300s, similar to the D600s, seeing several early problems including small engine and transmission faults, which were again repaired by NBL, but at the cost of being out of service with the Western region. Although by the mid-1960s, availability had improved to around 85%, the arrival of more refined diesel hydraulic designs during the early 1960s meaning that, like the D600s, the baby warships were similarly relegated to the bread-and-butter work of secondary passenger services, but mostly freight operations in Wales and the southwest of England. Withdrawals for the D6300 starting in December 1967 and continuing through until January 1972, upon which no members of the class were saved for preservation. More notable, however, was the D800 warships of Swindon's own drawing office which, as mentioned, were created from a downsized version of the German V200 as a response to MBL's failure to create the desired lightweight hydraulic class with the D600 and D6300. The scaling down of the D800s from the V200s, requiring these machines to be 10 inches lower and 16 inches narrower than the German locomotive, while accommodating the same engine and transmission sets as the V200, leading to the engine compartment of these locomotives being notoriously cramped while using stressed skin construction with thin metal plates forming the sides and roof of the body and steel tubes running the full length of the locomotive acting as the main members. The total weight of the D800s being kept under 80 tonnes, with power being derived from two 1,035 horsepower Maybach MD650 engines coupled to Makaidro K104U four-speed transmissions, these being coupled to bogies also derived from a German design. In January 1956, the BTC allowed the Western region to build three pilot D-800 warships numbered D-800, D-801 and D-802, each of which adopted the respective names of Sir Brian Robertson, Vanguard and Formidable, this being followed in February 1957 by an order for an additional 30 units that were to be produced at the Swindon Works. The main difference with this batch being that the Maybach engines were uprated to 1,135 horsepower each, with the exception of the unique D-830 Majestic, which employed Paxman 12Y JX engines with an identical power output, D800 eventually entering trials during July 1958, at which time a further 33 units were ordered, but would instead be built by North British in Glasgow rather than by the Swindon Works, these locomotives again presenting changes to the design of the power unit, which would see the MAN L12 B1821 B engine derated to 1,100 horsepower and coupled instead to a Voith LT306R transmission 
as per the D-6300 class, the final order for D-800 warships being made in April 1959 for five additional locomotives, with all units delivered in BR Standard Green with a white waistline strip. Entering service from August 1958, the D-800 warships were employed exclusively on passenger trains during their early years, as their low weight hindered their ability to provide suitable braking force for unfitted wagon-load freight trains. The primary diagrams of the class being on top-line services between London Paddington, Bristol and Penzance, only rarely straying north onto the former Great Western Main Line towards Leamington, Birmingham and Shrewsbury prior to 1962. The locomotives, however, not seeing the smoothest introduction, as it was quickly found that, due to a lack of ventilation, these locomotives experienced severe problems with their train heating boilers, which would rise to temperatures of up to 90 degrees and cause the engine relays to shut down the power unit, leaving the train stranded. Often requiring these services to be rescued by the steam traction, the warships have been employed to replace. Another more notable problem came due to the unsatisfactory riding qualities of the locomotives above 80 miles an hour, caused primarily by the fact that the German-derived bogies were not suited for operation above 75 miles an hour, as routes served by the V200 class were not of high speed running, thus leading to the implementation of a temporary speed restriction of 80 miles an hour for the warships while engineers performed various trials on the bogies, leading, after several months of studies, to a complete bogie redesign that added hydraulic dampers while another major complication of the D-800s was the fact that they integrated two different engines and transmissions, with the Maybach and Mann engines being generally interchangeable as far as the mountings and connections were concerned, while the Mekydro and Voith transmissions had no compatibility, with the Maybach engines of the Swindon units giving greater power and reliability, with an average of 80,000 to 96,000 miles between overhauls being noted, while the Mann power plants used by NBL locomotives were much more troublesome and presented only around 50,000 miles between major overhauls. Frequent problems with the man engines of the MBL-built warships, meaning these units were moved away from passenger services to sluggish freight trains. While the collapse of NBL in 1962, amid a slew of warranty claims by railway operators for the poor reliability of their products, meaning spares for the engines and Voith transmissions were increasingly hard to come by. Regardless of the early faults with the warships, investment into the diesel hydraulic concept continued, with an advanced design based on Krauss Maffei's experimental ML3000 3000 horsepower locomotive, which was equipped with the same Maybach MD650 engines and Mekydro K184 transmissions as used in the Swindon built D800 class, though this was uprated to 1500 horsepower. Initial proposals for the German manufacturer to once again allow Swindon to build, under license, a downscaled version of the ML3000, being dropped early on by the Western region, as they chose instead to develop their own locomotive from scratch. Utilizing two 1,380 horsepower Maybach MD655 engines coupled to Voith L360 RV transmissions, while the body used the stress skinned method of construction so successfully employed in the warships. Assembly of the various components being outsourced to multiple manufacturers across the UK so as to maintain industrial strength in a period of severe decline for British manufacturing. The power units being built by Bristol Sidley engines at their Anstey Works while 103 transmissions would be supplied by the North British Locomotive Company and Voith Engineering of Glasgow, and another 60 sets would be provided directly from West Germany. In the end, the BTC placed an order for 74 locomotives in September 1959, with this new class being christened the Western. Construction of these units to be split between Swindon, who would build the first 35 examples, while the crew works in Cheshire would deliver the final 39, although due to various problems with the final design details, the first member of the class was not delivered until December 1961, and so to relieve pressure on Swindon, the decision was made that the last five of the locomotives due to be built there would be constructed at Crewe instead, the original naming convention for the class being that of beauty spots across the West Country, with class premier number D1000 initially being lined up for the name Cheddar Gorge. Although this was quickly dropped in favour of the more striking Western titles, these units would enter service with. Another unique feature of the class being its wide array of liveries when outshopped from their various works. D1000 Western Enterprise, leaving the factory in a desert sand livery, with wheels, roof panels, bogies and window frames in black, followed by D1001 Western Pathfinder, in a maroon livery with white window frames, and the next three locomotives in traditional Brunswick green. A public competition held by the Western Region Management as to which of these liveries was the most appealing, eventually seeing maroon come out as victor with all locomotives, with the exception of D1015 Western Champion, receiving this treatment, D1015 itself wearing a unique golden ochre with red buffer beams.
D-1000 entered service in December 1961 and was quickly sent to Plymouth Slara Depot in Devon for trials, followed in February 1962 by D-1001, being chosen for various competitive trials against prototype diesel-electric D-0280 Falcon, the progenitor of the later Brush Type 4 or Class 47, only for its success to be hampered within a month, when the same bogey faults that had appeared in the earlier warships due to their low-speed German-based design became evident in the Westerns. The main problem being that the soft suspension between the bogies and the body frame created excessive movement of the carden shafts that transmit the drive from the engine to the transmission, thus weakening the shaft joints and putting stresses upon the transmission, with stiffening and repositioning of the torque reaction arms affecting a temporary repair, but one that would rear its head again during 1963 when the unsatisfactory ride qualities returned, meaning that, like the warships, a speed restriction of 80 miles an hour was implemented on the class although a program of bogey modifications, including replacing the rubber side blocks with metal fittings, commenced from the end of the year, and by April 1964, 50 members of the Western class were restored to working at their 90 mile an hour top speed. In terms of mechanical faults, the Westerns were, once again, plagued by issues with the train heating boiler. Although more prominent were concerns regarding the compressors and exhausters, dyno starts, and engine fuel pumps these being blamed on Bristol Sidley engines, who manufactured the Maybach power units under license. And in some instances, it was discovered that the materials used in building the engines were not up to the design specification. One example being when the compressor's lower central shaft roller bearing was found to have been substituted for a cheaper alternative, while on some of the crank cases, the wrong type of welding rod had been used in its construction. Another notorious issue of the Westerns being the ineffectiveness of the windscreen wipers when traveling at high speed leading to experiments in rotary wipers, as per early French electric locomotives, being applied to D1006 Western Stalwart and D1039 Western King. These wipers sweeping away the water, but produced an opaque film on the windscreen that restricted the driver's visibility, and thus causing the scheme to be cancelled. The final diesel hydraulic locomotive class to be introduced came in the form of the Hymec, the only diesel hydraulic class to fill the role of Type 3 designation and had not been ordered by the BTC under the requirements of the modernization plan, the project originating with Bayer Peacock of Manchester, who were hoping for a share of the mass ordering of diesel locomotives by British Railways so as to replace steam by the end of the 1960s. The company, at this point, specialising in the creation of diesel shunters, together with providing 200 sets of underframes for the brush type 2s, later designated Class 31. Bayer Peacock's intentions to supply complete locomotives for future orders leading to their early investigation into potentially building a mainline diesel hydraulic class that would bridge the gap between the smaller Type 2 D6300 class and the larger Type 4 warship, thus placing it into the Type 3 category, which would present a power output of between 1,501 and 1,750 horsepower. Therefore, in 1958, Bayer Peacock formed a consortium with Bristol Sidley Engines and J. Stone of Deptford called Bayer Peacock Hymec Limited and outlined early proposals for a Type 3 locomotive featuring a 16-cylinder Maybach MD870 engine capable of 1,920 horsepower, which would be coupled to the Makaidro K184U transmission, while assembly of these machines would be undertaken at Bayer Peacock's Gorton Works in Manchester, the proposed engine catching the interest of the BTC, who subsequently ordered a batch of 45 units at £80,000 each during June 1959, followed 13 months later and 10 months prior to the launch of the first Hymec locomotive, by an order for an additional 50 examples, based on their confidence in the design, added to in December 1961 by a further six units. For power, the Maybach MD870 engine, which was essentially a stretched version of the MD655 engine to be used in the Western, was employed for the Hymec, this power unit differing through its use of four intercoolers and two turbochargers, while the power output was reduced to 1,740 horsepower so as to bring it in line with the Type 3 specification. Manufacture of the engine being undertaken at Bristol Sidley's Anstey factory near Coventry, although the first 20 units contained a number of parts from Germany, while of the 116 sets of Makaidro transmissions, 91 were made by J. Stone and the remaining 25 in their native Friedrichshafen, the stretch skin body construction of the warship and western classes not being required for the Hymex. As through conventional construction, together with a single power unit and transmission, the locomotive sported a weight of 75 tonnes and thanks to its simple assembly, meant no special training was required for Bayer Peacock's staff, nor was a license agreement required to downsize a German equivalent locomotive, as per the likes of the warship, the main load-bearing members of the Hymec underframes being longitudinal rolled steel joists 
to which lighter angle sections were added to form the body framing, while the body panels themselves were made from lightweight sheets due to their being non-load bearing, as shown by the use of fiberglass mouldings for the cab roof. Unlike the troublesome German-derived bogey design for the Western and Warship classes, Hymex made do with the tried and tested Commonwealth bogey of the UK, to which unconventionally sized 45-inch wheels were used in place of the Western region's more standard 39.5 or 43-inch wheel diameters. And eventually, on May 16, 1961, the first Hymex D7000 was handed over to British Railways at a ceremony held at Paddington Station, being delivered almost two months ahead of schedule, although the last of the fleet, D7100, wouldn't be delivered until February 1964, after problems at Gorton caused a delay in assembly of the locomotives during the last 12 months of the production run. Differences within the Hymec fleet over the course of its construction being primarily based around its internal mechanics and equipment, with D7000 to D7044 being fitted with the stone vapour train heating boiler and Nor straight air brakes with Laycock Nor compressors, while the remainder of the fleet utilised the Spanner Mark 3A train heating boiler, with brakes and compressors supplied by Westinghouse, another difference being the positioning of the horns, which for the first three units was located under the buffer beam, before later examples had their horns moved to the cab roof. All Hymex being outshopped in British Railways two-tone green, and sported the unusual feature of having their cab numbers cast in aluminium rather than being painted. Hymex, much like the other diesel hydraulics, were not immune to their fair share of mechanical problems, the first being noted before the end of their first year in service in 1961, when engine coolant temperatures were found to be too excessive, together with a more serious problem of transmissions failing on starting. The Western region, concerned with regard to this fault, splitting the class into two groups, with odd-numbered locomotives up to D7075, having their engine derated to 1,350 horsepower, while the even-numbered members up to number D7078 had their first gear locked out of use. A subsequent investigation finding that there was a weakness in the transmission control gear, not changing gear at the preset engine speeds, which in turn caused them to overheat, leading to a strengthened control gear being installed, and all of the Hymex reverted back to normal condition by the end of 1963 while use of the Maybach MD870 engine was generally shown to have good performance and reliability, queered by the occasional loss of coolant into the cylinders. With these power units, by the 1970s, regularly completing between 8 and 10,000 hours service between overhauls, although by contrast, the Makaidro transmission was prone to several faults, including converter failure, damage to the clutches, stripped gear teeth, and metal in the filters, the rate of failed transmissions being so bad that spare units were constantly in short supply thus meaning that, in order to keep some members of the class in service, transmissions had to be borrowed from other Hymex, though in spite of this, given the relatively easy workloads and schedules these locomotives performed, the class were often considered the best performing diesel hydraulics of the western region. Sadly, before any of these diesel hydraulic classes had entered service, their position within the ranks of British Railways fleet was already surplus to requirement as in the midst of the modernisation plan failing to produce the desired results when it came to replacing steam locomotives, as well as leaving BR with nearly 3,000 different mainline diesel locomotives, of which many were either incredibly unreliable or extremely specific to their operational needs, the company board drafted the National Traction Plan during 1967, which called for the whittling down of the BR diesel fleet to those classes that proved to be the most reliable, cheapest to run, and most flexible in terms of operational capabilities. Prime examples being the Class 20, Class 31, Class 37, and Class 47, this being coupled to a wider crackdown on the autonomy each of the regions had previously enjoyed during the early years of BR's formation, so as to ensure that their practices, locomotive fleets and rolling stock all fell generally into line, and thereby reducing unnecessary expenditure when it came to maintaining and operating case-specific locomotive classes. In the end, while the diesel hydraulics had their various benefits, primarily their ability to marry incredible power with a far lighter body weight. By the middle of the 1960s, only 309 diesel hydraulic locomotives were in service with BR against 2,667 diesel electrics. And thus, by the principles of majority rule, diesel hydraulics were quickly seen as outliers of the BR diesel fleet, thus lining them up for retirement after only 10 years of active service at the most. The first of the classes to be withdrawn, alongside the earlier D600 and D6300 types, being the D800 warships with the first three units comprising the Pioneer D800 to D802 being officially taken out of service in 1968 due to their mechanical differences from the rest of the fleet, followed in 1969 by D830 because of its unique use of the Paxman power unit, alongside regular classmates D840 Resistance, D848 Sultan, 
and D863 Warrior, though locomotive shortages during that year meant the remainder of the fleet were allowed a reprieve of two years before major cuts to the active examples came during 1971, with no less than 45 units being scrapped during that year alone, comprising all of the former North British warships, designated Class 43s, and 15 Swindon units, designated Class 42s. January 1972 seeing a further nine locomotives withdrawn, but again, traction shortages returned three of these back into traffic. The 13 survivors, now in grubby and severely under-maintained condition, soldiering on until the end of the year, when D-832 Onslaught had the distinction of working the last warship hauled express on the British mainline network on December 16, 1972. Class 35 HIMAX were next to go, with the first examples withdrawn being D-7006 and D-7081 in September 1971, followed by 78 additional members during 1972, and thereby leaving only 21 units left at work by the beginning of 1973. 14 based at Old Oak Common and 7 at Bristol Bath Road. The survival of the Hymex throughout the year, as well as the reinstation of several retired examples, being due to their replacement, the Class 31, illustrating twice the amount of unreliability as the diesel hydraulics. And thus, entering 1974, 33 examples were in operation by the start of that year, with only four units officially withdrawn by 1975, although despite numerous reprieves, the Class 35s could not hold out forever and thus the final six examples were taken out of service between January and March of that year, as Class 31s and 33s moved in to replace them. Finally came the flagship Westerns, which were now the much-loved power of express operations out of London Paddington on both the prime commuter services to Reading, Oxford, Swindon, Bath, Bristol and Cardiff, as well as long-distance trains to Devon and Cornwall, their sterling performance meaning that, by the turn of the 1970s, the class was exhibiting an average of 150,000 miles between breakdowns, although such figures meant little to the management of British Rail, who had lined up the replacement for the Class 52 Westerns in the form of the Class 50s, a series of extremely powerful diesel-electric locomotives built originally to haul Royal Scott Expresses over the non-electrified section of the West Coast main line north of Crewe. The announcement of extending the electric wires from Weaver Junction south of Warrington to Glasgow Central, meaning that these engines would soon become available for use to displace the Westerns. The gradual takeover of Royal Scott Expresses by Class 86 and Class 87 Electrics in the run-up to the end of diesel operation on Anglo-Scottish Expresses, seeing the first Class 50s appear on services out of Paddington during 1973. The arrival of the first Class 50s meant withdrawals of the Westerns could commence during the same year. The first examples, D1019 Western Challenger and D1032 Western Marksman, being removed from duty in May 1973 followed closely by seven other members before the end of the year, including the four Westerns not fitted with dual brakes as per the rest of the fleet, D1017 Western Warrior, D1018 Western Buccaneer, D1019 Western Challenger, and D1020 Western Hero, maintenance staff at the Lehrer and Bristol Bath Road depots being told to keep the Class 52s in a serviceable condition, but to avoid major repairs and overhauls whenever possible, leading to the once pristine class, in their later years, being reduced to forlorn shadows of their former selves that ejected pronounced levels of blue smoke from their exhaust, a clear sign of the condition of the oil piping inside the locomotives leaking profusely and being burnt by the power unit, with draws commencing through 1974 with 11 further units retired and into 1975 with an additional 18 examples taken offline. By 1976, only 34 members of the class remained, many of which continued to see work on their top express diagrams due to a shortage of Class 50s caused by traction motor faults, although it wasn't uncommon to find Westerns relegated to freight operations, including use on China clay workings in Cornwall and private aggregate trains as operated by the Hansen Stone Company, repairs administered to the Class 50s meaning that withdrawals could continue towards the end of the year, and by 1977 only seven units remained in service, D1010 Western Campaigner, D1013 Western Ranger, D1022 Western Sentinel, D1023 Western Fusilier, D1041 Western Prince, D1048 Western Lady, and D1058 Western Nobleman. D1022 and D1058 being withdrawn during January of that year, leaving five examples still in operation, by the time a farewell tour was conducted on February 26, 1977, named the Western Tribute, hauled by D1013 and D1023, with D1010 and D1048 shadowing the tour to protect against loco failure. This service running from London Paddington to Swansea in South Wales, then down the South Devon main line to Plymouth, and then back to London via Westbury, 
this tour taking place only two days before the final Class 52s were officially taken off roster, and thus bringing an end to the era of diesel hydraulic locomotive traction on the British mainline network. Today, aside from no examples of the D600 and D6300 warship classes being preserved, seven Class 52s were saved from the cutter's torch, D1010 Western Campaigner, D1013 Western Ranger, D1015 Western Champion, D1023 Western Fusilier, D1041 Western Prince, D1048 Western Lady, and D1062 Western Courier. While originally three Class 42 warships were saved from scrapping, D832 Onslaught, D821 Greyhound, and D818 Glory. Although the latter, which took the role of a gate guardian at the Swindon Works, deteriorated severely after spending years outside in the harsh elements, leading to its eventual destruction in 1985, the Westerns and warships accompanied by four surviving Class 35 Hymex, D7017, D7018, D7029, and D7076, all of which are preserved in various conditions, ranging from static displays to mainline operational as is the case with D1015 Western Champion, which has seen frequent service on both rail tours and revenue-earning freight work across the UK. To summarise, the diesel hydraulics of the Western region, while incredibly stylish and mechanically innovative, were machines queered with inevitable withdrawal from the very start of their careers, thanks to their non-standard nature and somewhat isolated positions, serving only one of the British rail regions, their origins under the ill-conceived modernisation plan bringing into question whether the class should have come into existence in the first place, when the far more reasonable alternative of introducing a blanket class of diesel electrics for freight and passenger roles, as per the likes of Europe and America, should have been the course of the firm instead. Nevertheless, the diesel hydraulics introduced throughout their short careers a unique quirk of Britain's mainline railway network, as in a manner similar to the deltics of the East Coast Main Line, their dedicated transmissions and power plants led to among the most beloved series of locomotives ever to run on UK metals, and what are now considered staples of the British railway preservation scene. <laughs>